Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We have seen this story too many times to count. The fatal shooting of a young black man at the hands of police. The highly anticipated movie, The Hate You Give, examines how these tragic events affect communities. So let's take a look. Those goosebumps every time. What's up? Where you been at? I, mean, I don't know. You be hanging with all the white kids. Shut up. When you're not around, when you go that to the side. Out of the car. Yo, star, you okay? Go back where he told you. Come out. I'm not playing. Go back where he <laughs> What did you do? Please Gosh. welcome director George Tillman Jr. and the stars of the film, Algie Smith, and the amazingly talented Regina Hall, and the writer of the novel that inspired the film, Miss Angie Thomas. Yes! So very happy to have each of you here today. Uh, Mr. Tillman, we'll start with you. Um, this film has been getting rave reviews. How is that making you feel? I uh, feel great about it. Uh, the reason we made this film is to get people to have conversations, get people to talk. Mm -hmm. And um, the most important thing was everyone loved the book. You know, yeah. Angie Thomas' book debuted at number one. It mm -hmm. stayed there eight, eight, for 80 weeks. It's still there. I think wow. it's still there. Yeah. So I just That's wanted great. people to really love the movie as much as they love the book. And yeah. I think all our whole team together collabor you know, collaborated and did a great job. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. What's the premise behind it? For those people, who obviously you can kind of tell mm -hmm. what is going to happen. And we've seen this story. We, we report these stories. Uh, what is the premise behind it, this book? And why what, did it resonate with you so much? Well, the premise is about a 16-year-old girl named Star who switches between these two very different worlds. The mostly black poor neighborhood, or the hood, where she lives, and the mostly white upper-class private school that she attends. And her struggle of being two different people in two different worlds is challenged mm -hmm. when she's the sole witness of her childhood best friend, Khalil, being killed by a cop. Right. Khalil mm -hmm. was unarmed. And what she does or does not say could not only change her community, but it could change her life. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Regina, yeah. when, when you read the screenplay and you knew how hard and difficult the content was, what type of feelings did it invoke on you and the character that you were going to play? Well, you know, some of those feelings already exist. I mm -hmm. mean, I think we're already watching the news, you know, all of us. We have brothers, you know, fathers, you know, husbands, boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And so we're so impacted by this cycle. Um, and the fact that the script, the, the script, when I read it, so beautifully executed how these tragedies affect a family and a community right. and us right. personally, you know, and the fact that, 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 jo that, you know, well, Angie had written so beautifully about it and that George really wanted to keep the integrity of the book and tell that story mm -hmm. in such an honest way. You know, I was, I was um, honored, honestly, to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. It really takes you from behind the headline. You know, we see the headlines, yeah. we do the 30 second story, yeah. and now it gives you the, the in-depth look of what happens, yeah. not only to the family, but the community around and Everybody needs to see that. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important, because you know what? It's so easy in five seconds to forget a headline. Absolutely. But when you are impacted, that's what I love about the film, is that you experience mm -hmm. it. You don't just go, ooh, such and such. It's not just yeah. the name on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Needs to yeah. Be yeah. yeah. absolutely, yes. and everybody needs to see it. Um, Algie, your character, Khalil, obviously mm -hmm. uh, is unjustly killed by police. What type of headspace, being a young black male, did you have to go to to be able to capture this character the way that you did? Yeah, well, at first, I think I was uh, I was actually trying too hard to find my headspace mm -hmm. and uh, trying to make sure I got it right. And once I realized, like what you just said, I, I relate to Khalil more than I than I thought I did. I'm a young black man in America, and what happened to him could happen to me at Absolutely. any given moment. So. I think what it took for me just to be comfortable with myself, be, be comfortable with right. sitting in the emotions that I already naturally felt and just letting Khalil speak to me. Yes, yes. Well, George, let me ask you a question. So we're hearing about these headlines and these types of stories so much and so often, we, it's countless at this point. Do you think that we have, number one, become desensitized to the situation? And number two, what makes this story more compelling and makes it more different than anything else we're listening to now? And I think uh, what I was you know, feeling when we were making a movie is that we, the film offers so many emotions in terms yeah. of, you know, there's, this is a close-knit family. They're very close. They get through their obstacles. They do it through fun, through humor, through warmth. And there's a lot of humor in the film, and you kind of reminds us of ourselves yes. when we're growing up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that's really what we love is that you can walk out and be inspired. Mm -hmm. And Star does this. We see her at the end of the movie, and you just cheering. And that's what I love when I see the audience when they see the movie when they stand up and they cheer and they feel like, yeah. hey, we can do something. Yeah. That really yes. gets me. Yes. I feel like I did my job as a director. Yeah. And speaking of that, you brilliantly <laughs> uh, gave 
the watcher a look on both sides from Black Lives Matter and from the police standpoint. Mm -hmm. Why, why was that so important for you to tell the story from both sides? It's, it's important because we are all three, you know, dimensional people. You know, we are human. We got flaws. We got, we got different ways how we see things. And I think it becomes sort of one note if you just see <laughs> one way. And I think it starts with Star. She's able to see what she can do differently. And she touched all these different people in the movie. She's the light in the darkness, as Angie wrote in the book. And that is why we enjoy characters in films. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, Angela, how does it make you feel to, to know that something that you wrote pen to paper, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's this, that type of obedience to whatever call of God or whoever you serve gave to you, what does it make you feel like to see all mm -hmm. of this now? It's a blessing. Yeah. I, I'm thankful to God every single day, knowing what I came from and knowing I'm like here with y'all right now. That's amazing. <laughs> right. But, but for me, it shows me what's possible, and I hope it shows young people what's possible. Right. If you follow the call that's placed on your life and you stay true to yourself, you yes. can get anywhere. Yes, yeah. yes. And Regina, okay, of course, <clears throat> you play the mother of the star, mm -hmm. Amanda Stenberg, who mm -hmm. had a brilliant mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. I love her. Uh, tell us about her working with her and how you were able to play that role so brilliantly as well. Yeah, um, Amanda is so wonderful. She's tremendous. It was incredible to watch what she gave. And I only saw what she gave going from rehearsal and during the shooting. That doesn't even include what she gave in terms of reading the book, studying the book, mm -hmm. loving it, working with George. I mean, she is she's incredibly talented as an actress and she's incredibly committed as an artist yeah. so it was it was it was wonderful and i had a, i mean it was she's easy to love i yeah. mean you know jo george did a great job casting she's an easy girl to to want to protect to want to love mm -hmm. and the other kids are just as easy to love and i think as as women and as black women we are um, innately nurturers we mm -hmm. are innately loving and i thought of my mother and the women who raised me yes. and the, you know well, back then, the community raised us, so, yeah. you know, the other people's mothers on the block and, you know, our teachers, and, and it was always done with strength, but a lot of love. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, very briefly for all of you, you talk about uh, code switching. Can you explain what that is and how many of us had to do it? We do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> we do it every day. You gotta yeah. ask. You gotta I'm the queen ask. of the yeah. cold switch. Sometimes it feels like a survival tactic. Right, right. Honest, mm -hmm. you know? yeah. um, for me, it was when I was in college, I had to cold switch, change who I was, where I was, because I went to a mostly white school and lived in the hood. And I always felt like as a young black woman entering majority white spaces, I was either seen as too much or not enough. Mm. And that's what I think at the heart of code switching is. You feel like you're too much or you feel like you're not enough and you try to overcompensate. Right, right, right. Well, it's always trying to make other people feel comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, there's a positive to code switching too. Yeah, I was going to say. I think, yeah. I think yeah. there's also, <clears throat> I think there's also a flip side of it. There's code switching that's that's necessary at some time yes. as well. Like you know, mm -hmm. I can't. We can't just be how we are. I mean, we could how we are just with our boys, with our family, the same that we are, right. same that we, way yeah. that we are in a business meeting or something. Yeah, like absolutely. That. So, like, so it works. It knowing works. when to co switch and right. when not to do it. Absolutely. Right. Well, we thank you so much. You. And as I told you earlier, Regina, thank you so much for just just being as beautiful as you are and just embracing your gifts and how you've been able to navigate Hollywood. And we're just very proud of you. Thank very you. proud of each and every one of you thank for you. just really tapping into all of your gifts and continued success on everything. Oh, the yeah, yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> of course, the major gives the select theaters this Friday and nationwide, October the 19th.